Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I am back in the latest face that we just made over. I'm still so obsessed with this face. Over the weekend, we took a trip to Texas and that was so much fun. And now I'm feeling re-energized to tackle another space in this house. I know in the last video, I said we were basically done with the main level of the house, but then I remember there's one more space that we totally have been ignoring and and every time I look at it, it honestly just makes me cry because it's so bad. And the space that I'm referring to is our attached garage. Garages usually become a dumping ground and are often forgotten about. So this is something that I really want to tackle right now, especially since I want to start DIYing in there more. Right now I'm using the basement and since it's nicer outside, I want to be able to work in the garage. So I'm going to sort it out today. And something really fun that we're going to do in this video is to actually paint a mural. When we first moved into the house, a lot of you guys requested that I paint a mural and this is actually the perfect spot because I have a huge empty wall that would be so fun to paint. There's also a lot of cleaning and organization to do, so I hope this video gives you some inspo for your own garage spaces. I also would like to thank Brightling for sponsoring today's video. I'm such a huge fan of the brand and I think you guys are going to love them, so I'll talk a little bit more about them later on. So without further ado, let me take you over to the garage, which is right over here. Okay, so let's go to the garage. Already I need to replace this doorknob, but welcome to my garage, also known as Spiderweb City. There's really not that much to see in here except for a lot of project extras that I keep over here. Lots of tools and supplies. That right there is actually really exciting because that's for the backyard makeover, which I can't wait for. So you guys have to wait for that coming soon. And then over here is just, you know, sawdust. Oh my God. Cardboard that I use to do projects on. And then my bifold doors that we took off. We've been storing it in here, but I think I should put them in the basement actually because we have more storage there. And then a bag of salt that we never used over the winter because we were too lazy to. <laughs> Also in this corner, we have a pressure washer. My future brother-in-law actually gave this to us, so I'm very excited to use this. I've never used one before, but today is the day, so I'm pretty excited for that. But as you can see, our walls are just not looking the best. I believe there was probably stairs here or something because it leads up to the attic, which I'm totally never going up. <laughs> but this wall is where I wanna put the mural, so that's what we're going to paint. And then for the rest of the walls, I think I'm just gonna do a nice clean white layer just to brighten this up a little bit. And in this corner, this is where I wanna put all of our main storage, just because when we park our car in here, there literally is not that much space in between. So this area is gonna house all the things that we have kind of laying around, but nicely organized, so I'm very excited for that. I can already see a spider right over there. So we're gonna have to say goodbye to him. And yeah, there's plenty of spider webs literally all along this wall, which I will spare you guys and not zoom in on them, but yeah, it's everywhere. I'm like dreading cleaning this, but also very excited because this is something that I've been putting off for a while. And once it's done, it's gonna feel so good in here. So I hope you guys are ready for a cleaning montage because there's gonna be a lot of it. If any of you guys have tips on how I can get rid of spiders in our garage, please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. Doing a cleanup and maintaining the space is definitely going to help. So I'm moving everything away from the walls and sweeping as best as I can. And it's definitely time for me to get some bug spray or something because now that it's summertime, this has only gotten worse. It's power wash time. I think that's spray paint on there, so I probably shouldn't pressure wash it. Okay then. <laughs> 
So that was kind of a fail, but I realize now that I probably could have just used my hose to clean the walls a little bit better. And now even when I look at the walls, I can totally see that this is spray paint and not some type of brick paint. So yeah, that did not go according to plan. But I did clean up the floors a little bit with the pressure washer, so that was really satisfying. But I'm gonna go back again and clean after the fact because I know this is gonna get messy while we do all the projects. And also later that night, I did go back in just to wipe the walls down to make sure that it was going to be nice and prepped for primer. Good morning guys! The garage is now clean and today is a huge prep day so I'm going to prime paint and then I'm also going to start planning the mural. I already have a vision for it. I just have to draw it out just to make sure that I have everything ready. And over here I have all of the paint. I also got bug spray so I just spent yesterday also spraying the garage. So hopefully we'll have less spiders. First things first though, I'm going to prime the wall that... Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god, I thought that was a bug. So I'm priming the wall that we're doing the mural just to make sure that the paint sticks on there really well. And then I'm going to go in with a brick paint for the rest. And this is some leftover paint that I had from doing our fireplace. So it's really nice because for this project, I actually get to reuse a lot of leftover paint. So that's really great. Okay, so we got to do some of the boring stuff before we can get to the fun stuff. So I'm priming with kills. And this is the primer that I use on basically everything, including our fireplace when we made it over and that has really held up great. So this is a great primer if you're ever looking for one. And if you're dealing with very textured walls like I am here, I would definitely recommend to use a thick nap roller. I didn't have any on hand, but that works really well just to get into all those little crevices. have my paint sprayer ready to go and we're gonna do two coats so yeah basically my whole day has just been painting but tomorrow it's gonna be a lot more fun so let's paint these walls let's get them nice and white and ready to go I'm using a masonry paint in the color Bit of Sugar by Bear. This is the same color that I used on the fireplace project, so I had some extra left over, and then I ended up buying an extra gallon just to make sure that I can cover the entire garage. The paint sprayer worked really great for this, and I always get questions on the one that I use, and this one is by the brand Greyco. They have a ton of models at different price points to choose from, so you can find one that suits your needs. And I'll link the one that I'm using in the description box below, as well as all the other materials that I'm using for this video. You can totally see the difference between this side and then this side. Wow. So while this dries, I'm gonna go and make some lunch. But first, let me change out of this outfit. I'm gonna make a quick little lunch today. So I'm having ravioli. I've been on a ravioli kick, so I have a ton of these stocked in my fridge right now. And all I do is just boil these and then put a little drizzle of olive oil and then some salt and pepper. And it's honestly the best lunch ever. I'm gonna use my new favorite olive oil, which is from Brightland. They honestly make the best olive oil. And even from the first time that I smelled this, I knew that it was high quality. And if you haven't heard of Brightland, they make delicious, high-quality olive oil, and these are made with 100% olives. And you can see right here, it says California made because all of their olives are sourced from family-run farms in California. So you know that you're getting really high-quality olive oil. I'm always on the hunt for some good olive oil, and it's a little bit harder to find in stores because they usually have additives, and this has none of that. And you really can taste the difference when you try this. So this one right here is the Awake one. This is a little bit more grassy and robust. Bust. And this one is really good for breads and pastas, so that's what I'm going to use on top of my ravioli. And they also have their Alive Olive Oil, which is smoother and a little bit more nutty. And this one's really great on greens or salads, so I drizzle this all over my kale salads. And both of these are really rich tasting, but it just depends on your mood on which one you want to use. And since we're having ravioli today, I'm going to use Awake, and I know it's going to taste so good. This smells so good, and it's time for a little taste test.
Mmm, that was so good. I can honestly say that having high quality olive oil really does make a difference. It makes even a simple like this just taste so much more elevated. And aside from olive oil, they also make honeys and vinegars and they also have little sets so you can get these two together. And I think that would honestly make such a great gift as well. So if you wanna grab the set or just try out Brightland overall, they're giving you guys 10% off of your entire purchase with my link down below. So make sure you guys check that out. And for now, I'm gonna finish my lunch and then we'll get back to painting. Good morning, you guys. It is finally mural painting day. It is super cloudy and gloomy and really rainy outside, but we're gonna get this done. I wanted to show you what my plan is for the mural. So I have a little draft right here. So no surprise here, we're going with a plant theme. I really love all the colors of this and I drew this up last night. It's definitely inspired by a bunch of different paintings that I've seen on Pinterest. So this is kind of a combination of all of those. So I have a sun right here and then a bunch of different plants, mostly in green, which is great because I can reuse a lot of paint. I did went ahead and grab some paint samples. So these are some new colors that I didn't already have that I thought would be a great addition. I also stopped by Dollar Tree and grabbed a bunch of different painting supplies. So they have these little brushes that are actually pretty great. And for $1.25, you can't really go wrong. So I have a bunch of these for all the different colors. And to sketch this out, I'm going to use some chalk. This is really great because you can easily remove it off the wall if you need to make any changes and it's really forgiving so this is going to be crucial and I'm not going to lie as much as I'm excited about this I'm a little bit nervous as well just because I want it to be perfect but I know it's going to turn out good no matter what the only way to get it done is to start so I'm going to grab my chalk and then get to sketching I found the largest round object that I could around the house, which happened to be this basket, and I used it to trace the sun. And I started with this because it's kind of the focal point to the design, and then I basically just built around it. You'll notice that I'm using different colored chalk, but you can totally just use one piece of chalk. I just like using different colors because this is gonna help me visualize all the layers and all the different colors better. And to be honest, I was most nervous for this part because I've never drawn anything this large before. So the proportions are really important here as well as making everything look balanced. But luckily plants are imperfect, so you do not need to be super precise and you can easily change the shapes just to make sure that everything looks right. And since this is the first Time I'm doing a mural, I just wanted to do something that was simple and something that would look really good and just make me super happy to look at every day. So this design is exactly that. Drafting up my design beforehand was crucial. And if you wanted to make your life easier, you can use a projector to trace that right onto the wall. That would have made this process a lot easier and also would have calmed my nerves down a little bit. I was this close to buying a projector for this project, but in the end, I wanted to challenge myself a bit and also give myself room to change up the design to really fit the space. This allowed me to think more on my feet and I was able to adjust it accordingly and just fill up the space as I saw needed. And I'm just so happy that I handed this instead. Okay, so this is where we're at. I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. It looks a little crazy right now because we have a bunch of bright colors on here. I'm gonna start with all the background pieces first and then work our way to the foreground, but I'm very, very happy with this and I can't wait for it to come to life. We are finally at the fun part. There was so much prep going into this mural that I was just really excited to finally get some paint onto the walls. So as I mentioned, I'm just working on the background shapes first and that way we can build up to the foreground. I wanted these to be more neutral toned and this is also going to help fill up the space a lot better. And for this first paint, I ended up mixing that mauve pink color that I love. We used this in our powder bathroom and I mixed it with a little bit of white just to tone it down. And it just gave me the perfect shade. So don't be afraid to mix up your paint colors. Don't trip. Why do you hold it so far away? This is a waste of paint. And even though I did buy a few paint samples, this project is so great for using leftover paint. So I'm glad that I'm able to use some old supplies and also save a little bit of money. If you're curious about any of the paint colors that I'm using, I will list those down below for you guys as well. What's your inspiration behind this piece? Play. Always plants. Because I feel like we don't get enough sunshine here, so our plants are not doing the best. So these will stay alive forever. Do you consider my painting helpful? Yeah. Why do you hold it so far away? Thank you. 
neutral colors are done and you can kind of see that it's bouncing up and down just so that there's some balance. As I went along, I noticed how much paint an uneven surface like this could eat up. I found myself having to load up my brush with a lot of paint to try to fill up each one of those shapes. So if you plan on painting a mural on brick, be prepared to use a lot of it, especially when it comes to the background and just larger shapes overall. I hope that sharing this mural project will inspire some of you guys to paint one of your own. If you do have a place to do it, this is definitely one of those DIY bucket list projects that I've always wanted to do, but I've just never had the space or the opportunity to do it. And now that I do, I knew that I just had to go for it. And I hope you guys are loving how this is turning out. This is gonna make such a fun background for future videos. And I cannot wait to start utilizing the space to build so many more projects on this channel. Okay, my hands are covered in paint. I'm gonna call it a night, but so far this is looking really good. I am really happy with the progress. And fingers crossed we get it done tomorrow. It's time to finish this mural. So I was watching a video last night on how you should mix some paint with water. So I'm gonna do that and hopefully that'll give me smoother lines. Uh, this is for the yellow and I'm very excited cause it's so bright and pretty. That's probably enough. Give that a nice stir. And we definitely don't want it to be too liquidy, but this will definitely help since we have so much texture on the walls. Okay, good to go. This second day of painting was really dedicated to the foreground and getting in all of those little details. I did the sun first because I knew that it was going to be tricky to get as close to a perfect circle as possible. And my biggest tip here is to move in a slow motion with your entire arm versus just using your wrist. You'll find more control doing it this way, especially when it comes to creating a large circle like this. I used some smaller brushes for these viney plants and it also helped out a lot if it's angled. That way you can get things as crisp as possible. But if you do find yourself with any jagged edges, you can always go back in later with the same background color and that way you can just clean it all up and give it a nice crisp line. I really love doing any type of detail work, so doing this was really therapeutic for me. The whole process of just outlining everything and then filling it all in really felt like doing a ginormous coloring book. And even though this is on a much larger scale, it doesn't mean that it's any easier to stay within the lines. But I found that the key here is to take a step back, look at the bigger picture, and then just make any adjustments that you see fit. And that also goes with colors, so even though I did have a draft and I used that as a guide, as I went along, I figured out which colors would be best wear, and I tried to create a cohesive color palette throughout the whole entire mural. And honestly, I only painted this mural because you guys inspired me to. I got a bunch of comments to create art on my walls and I thought to myself, well, why not go ahead and just do it? If anything, I can always paint over this if I ever have to in the future. And I am truly just so appreciative of all your feedback on all the makeovers and the videos. Your encouragement really helps empower me to do projects like this and I'm just so thankful for it. The mural is done. I'm so happy with how it looks. It just looks so cute and I think it's gonna be a perfect backdrop. So right now I'm gonna let this dry and then tomorrow I'll wipe off some of the chalk, clean it up a little bit on the edges and then finish up the makeover. garage is almost done today guys i just finished up the mural this morning and now it's actually about to storm outside so i thought that i would spend some time building this shelf i bought a bunch of different items to organize the garage so i'm very excited just to get it all up and actually organize everything in there and finish up this makeover we're gonna finish everything up today and then maybe i'll give you guys a tiny little sneak peek of what's going in the backyard we'll see Thank you. 
this pegboard was so easy to install. You just need a masonry drill bit to get through these cinder blocks. Pilot holes are a must to get this up. And this pegboard that I got came with three panels, but I could only fit two side by side. So I'm just gonna save the third one for somewhere else. And once I did get it up there, it was super sturdy. So I know it's going to hold all of the stuff that I'm going to put on there. This is such a great way to utilize vertical space and just really keep everything organized, especially when it comes to my tools. I kind of just throw them around everywhere. So this is going to be a lifesaver. And I also just feel way more like a legit DIYer now that I have this. And it really does just make me feel so much more inspired instead of stressed out when I have to plan out a project. To utilize even more vertical space, I found a tool organizer to keep the larger tools off of the ground. This one was really inexpensive and we can finally put our shovel and our brooms and everything else from flopping around. I was constantly knocking those over, so this was a must. And I also love that it has hooks so you can hang things off of it too. The last thing I'm adding to the walls is a large hook. This holds up to 50 pounds, so you use it for other things like a hose, sports gear, or skis, or whatever else. But for us, it's going to be the new home for my trusty ladder that I may or may not have stolen from my dad when we first moved in, and I'm honestly surprised he hasn't asked for it back. <laughs> It is finally time to share the complete garage transformation with you. Before it was very dark in here, there was no storage whatsoever, and I honestly just dreaded being in there. And now it is a functional space that also sparks inspiration. So without further ado, here is the after. Okay, I feel so relieved that this makeover is done with. The house actually is decluttered because I was able to move a bunch of stuff into the garage. The mural also came out so good. I'm really proud of it. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Would you guys attempt a mural in your own homes? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I can't wait to hear your feedback. And a huge shout out to Brightland for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you guys check them out. You can save 10% with my link down below. And if you'd like to see more from me, you can give me a follow over on Instagram. I post on there every single day and that is it for today's video thank you so much for watching stay inspired and i'll see you in the next one bye